the 101 on compression. The Zykatar, let's talk about it. Guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another episode of iKatar. Today we're talking about compression. And compression is a an effect used in our gain stage for us guitar players, and it is a fun effect to use. But there's a lot of mystery surrounding how to use compression properly and what exactly it does. So hopefully this 101 tutorial on compression will help you guys understand what compression is and what it's used for. All right, so what is a compressor? What is a limiter? They're in the same family. Compression and limiting essentially is a way of reducing the dynamic range of your instrument. And dynamic range here is the lowest sound to the highest sound. What compression will essentially do is it'll raise up the volume of your low stuff and tame the volume of your high stuff and make it a lot more consistent. Compressors are used in all kinds of different genres of music, but typically when we think compression, we think of funk guitar, we think of a lot of bass guitar, and we think of a lot of rock. Now that is not to say compression can't be used for other genres as well. Compression is definitely more of a taste thing than it is, you know, what I want it to sound like, although there are applications for compression in the actual I want this specific sound kind of range. A lot of early rock guitarists didn't actually use a lot of compression. In fact, compression didn't really get big, in my opinion, until like the late 60s, okay? So all that time before, compression wasn't really a huge thing. You definitely saw compression happening during the Motown funk era. That's where compression really took the limelight. Now, I'm going to leave you guys to determine whether or not compression is right for you in your genre. I typically really enjoy compression, but not as much compression as you might think. I found that playing a lot of church music especially, compression is not the best thing to use for dynamic control, but if you're going to be playing more rock guitar, more rock gigs, I really do like to use compression for those kinds of things. So it's up for you guys to decide whether or not compression is the effect for you. Now, one thing I want to get you guys in the right headspace about is compression is not always the easiest to hear. Compressors typically will need to take practice and understanding over time to really hear how compressor affects your signal. And definitely, I would say, after working with compressors for a long time, in and out of the studio and on my rig, compressors sound totally different. Now, there is a consistent, yes, I'm squashing my dynamic range element to it, but compressors do sound different. Let me go over a couple of compressors that I use and some things to keep in mind when picking out your own. Now, when I talk about compression, I typically think of it as a studio-grade compression. And what I mean by that is there are certain types of compressors that I remember in the studio and on records that I particularly liked. One of them being the Teletronics LA-2A, very well-known rock compressor, great for vocals, very warm-sounding, but it was photo-optical. And so I happen to have a, a compressor pedal based on the LA-2A model. This is the... PC-2A from Effectrode. What I love about the PC-2A is that it is a photo optical tube compressor, so it actually marries the warm qualities of a tube compressor with the precision of a photo optical compressor. This one is a great pedal. I like this one a lot. The only issue is that it requires a heavy power draw because of the tube inside. They're also very expensive, but don't mind that for now. Essentially, I love the sound of smooth, natural sounding compression, and the LA-2A is the one that can't be beat, really. So the next compressor that I really like is the FET style compression. That stands for Field Effect Transistor. They're fast, they're clean, they're reliable. They kind of emulate warm tube sounds, but with transistor circuits. What I appreciate about the FETs is that they are used on all kinds of records. The most famous FET compressor being the 1176. that has been used on Led Zeppelin, Michael Jackson, all kinds of different things. And it's great for pretty much anything. Now, my favorite guitar pedal in this style of compression is the Cali 76 Compact Deluxe Compressor. It's made by Origin FX. Yes, they're expensive, but they're sturdy and reliable. And they've got a lot of cool features on it. If you don't want the Compact Deluxe, you can get the smaller version but this pedal is amazing. Now, there are more compressors out there in the world. You don't need to have an insanely expensive compressor, although I feel like the sound of an expensive compressor like these, these high-end compressors, or sound really, really great to me, but there are all kinds of compressors out there in the world. Everyone under the sun makes a compressor pedal from Strymon to JHS to whomever. You can definitely find compressors 
with any budget. There are small compressors, there are large compressors, there are complex compressors, there are simple compressors. There is a compressor everywhere for whatever needs you have. And if you can't get it in this box, you can get it somewhere else, guaranteed. So I'm not gonna go crazy and demo a lot of compressor pedals for you, but I really do want to just kind of get your feet wet in terms of what common parameters are used across compressors. And then hopefully, as you dive into your own compressors, you'll find out what sounds you like and what sounds you don't like. But first off, let's go over some common parameters for most compressors. So the first common parameter with compressors is the threshold parameter. And what threshold essentially means is that at what point in the gain stage does the compressor begin to act on a signal? And for most people, thresholds are typically dependent upon how much gain you're pumping through your guitar. I like to leave my threshold somewhat out in the open so it gets some dynamic, but when I really drive in, it really begins to act on that compression. So the next common parameter is the knee. The knee refers to how the compressor transitions from a non-compressed state to a compressed state. And typically knees can be hard or soft depending upon what you desire, but the knee is especially useful in determining how smooth or how sharply drastic the compression begins to activate. So attack time and release time are pretty self-explanatory. Attack time is just saying how fast does the compressor react on a signal source and how long it takes to fully compress the signal. Release time is the opposite. How long will it take once compressed to go back to the original signal source? Now the next two parameters are arguably the most important, although not to be confused at how important the other parameters are. We have compression ratio and output gain. So the compression ratio specifies the amount of compression hitting a signal when it passes your threshold. In a two to one compression ratio, for example, every two decibels over the threshold, it'll get attenuated to one. Now, as an example, if you were to have two to one compression ratio and you have an eight decibel signal source above the threshold, it gets chopped down to four decibels. Two to one, eight, you get it. Now I'll have a chart here kind of explaining what compression ratios look like as they pass the threshold, but typically three to one is moderate compression, five to one is obviously more severe compression. You get to 20 to one or like limiting level, it'll like won't even, it'll just get squashed and nothing's ever gonna come out again. So um, typically for most guitar players, I like to end up between two and a half to one or three to one compression. Now the final parameter most common in compressors is the output gain. Now typically when we hear compression, we perceive it as being louder, but technically when you compress something, you end up attenuating the signal source. That's where output gain comes into effect. Output gain is volume added on the back end of your compressed signal to make the volume a little louder. Now, not to be confused with input gain, that's before the compressor actually hits, but the output gain solely determines how much output is coming out. So if your guitar gets compressed, and it's really, really quiet to you, increase that output gain, you know, increase the sound of that compressed signal coming out of your pedal board. Now guys, this was just a primer into how compression kind of gets worked. You can go into Logic or GarageBand and work on practicing with how compression sounds to you. Now what I will say is for most people, beginning guitarists especially, you don't really need compression right off the bat. Don't let your compression keep you from playing out or playing at your local place. What I would say is that most distortions and overdrives have some built-in compression anyway. Just the nature of how distortion overdrive works, you're going to squash your signal just a little bit. So I wouldn't worry too much about whether or not you need a compressor, but go to your local music shop, try to compressor near you, and see if this pedal is right for your rig. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time, not just about compression. Guys, you have been amazing. Thank you for listening. And of course, let me know in the comments below if you have a compressor that you really like or sounds really good. And make sure to hit me up on Instagram. If you have any questions about compression, want to know some good pedals or some good products, let me know and I'll happily help you out. And of course, we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of iGuitar.